Gedanken. Share screen. Okay. Um, so can you see my presentation? So I'll make you a co-host first, sir, and then okay. uh, try it. Try oh, Okay. All right. Can you can you see my presentation now? Yes. yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, again, welcome everyone. Um, so I'm glad I get the chance to be invited again for this presentation. So uh, tonight I am happy to share with you um, the the do's and the don't pertaining to the OBC mandatory inspection. So the question that we are trying to answer for tonight is about um, uh, what are the mandatory inspection as per the entire building code. So this is basically the continuation of the first part that I presented last April. What's your YouTube? So once a building permit is issued, uh, you can start the construction. Okay, and once you start the construction. Uh, building projects are subject to mandatory inspection at specific stages of construction or demolition to confirm building standard are met. The mandatory inspections at each stages of construction are prescribed in OBC Division C 1351. Uh, the objective of building inspection is to determine whether the structure complies with approved drawings and the minimum building code requirements. Buildings are, sub, are inspected to ensure that uh, zoning bylaws, residents health and safety, and the building standards are followed. It is required for new construction, renovation, and demolition. So let's get started. Okay, disclaimer first, everything discussed in this topic is my personal and sole opinion. Uh, the presentation should only be used for informational and educational purposes only. Every situation is different and the end result may, may differ. Consult your legal advisor, building official and building designer for professional advice before making any decision. Analyze the risk accordingly before proceeding to take action. Okay, just a quick background for me. I am a professional engineer from PEO, uh, certified building code official from OBOA. I'm also a certified engineering technologist um, from OSET. Um, I am a licensed civil engineer in the Philippines. Um, I am one of the executive for the OSAT Georgian Bay chapter. Um, also, at the same time, I'm one of the executive for the PEO Simco Muscopa chapter. Uh, currently, I'm still employed. Um, I'm working with the township of Springwater, and I am the deputy chief building official. Okay, just a quick background. Um, in uh, Canada, we, we are using the four building codes. We have the 2012 Ontario Building Code, the uh, 2018 um, British Columbia Building Code, uh, the 2019 National Building Code, Alberta Edition, and then the 2015 National Building Code, which uh, is being adopted by the provinces that include Manitoba, New Brunswick, Newfoundland and Labrador, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, Quebec, Saskatchewan, and other territories that include Northwest Territories, Nunavut, and Yukon. So just an overall picture. Um, so ang British Columbia, meron silang sariling 
Provincial Building Code, uh, which is the British Columbia Building Code, 2018. Alberta is using the 2019 National Building Code, Alberta edition. And then the Ontario, our province, we are using currently the 2012 Ontario Building Code. The rest of the provinces in Canada and other territories they are adopting the 2015 National Building Code. So um, building code, they are pretty much similar um, nationwide, Canada-wide. They are very similar. Okay, so, so when we um, receive a building permit, so when we receive the building permit, it's been approved by the building department. Um, dalawa yon. Um, it in, the building permit include the building permit card and then the approved drawings. So the permit card, you have to post that on site in a conspicuous place uh, para malaman ng mga tao na meron kong building permit while you're doing construction. And the approved drawings that they issued um, need to be on site at all times so, so that um, the inspector uh, can use that during their inspection. Okay. Again, um, at each stages of construction, uh, kailangan mong tumawag ng, ng mga inspection. Uh, you have to give them at least two business days in advance if you want to book for inspection. And the OBC reference is OBC Division C 1353. Again, make sure you follow uh, accurately the required inspection. Um, kailangan mo yon para uh, ma-check nila na yung ginagawa mo comply with the approved drawings and it, it comply with the minimum requirement of the code. So these are the four code reference. And, and, um, and the required inspection at each stage of construction, they are prescribed in the code, meaning they are they are prescribed, they are specified, and that's why they become mandatory. Okay. So what are the mandatory inspection? So, um, so when uh, for new construction, um, it's going to start from the footing. Um, so you have to call for a footing inspection pr prior to doing a concrete pouring. Okay. The next one is... Uh, uh, the foundation inspection, which is prior to backfilling the foundation. Next one is the framing, and then the edge back wrapping and inspection. Uh, you're going to be doing the plumbing at the same time. Um, next inspection, the plumbing consists of the building sewer, building drain, water service pipe, and fire service mains. The drain and also it include the drainage, waste, and venting system. Also, uh, they have to check also the water distribution system, which uh, include the hot and cold water line. Um, also, the back roof protection. Um, the air burial also uh, is uh, required inspection um, that needs to be called also. Um, all and at the same time. And the next inspection and insulation. After you frame everything, kailangan mo lagyan ng insulation. And then before you close that, make sure it's been inspected by the building department so that they put it on record that uh, you comply with your drawing. Um, in, in cases where you have a fire separation, uh, you have to also call, call for, for the required um, inspection prior to covering it. So that's one of the important thing, like uh, if you are dealing with multi-unit, every unit need to be par separated from each other. So par separation is one of the requirement also for inspection. Again, when you, before you occupy the building, you have to call for occupancy inspection. Okay. Um, Kaila, check nila, check namin yung mga minimum requirements just to make sure that everything are safe. We completed everything, um, all the previous inspection, and then then we will grant you okay or approved to occupy the building. And the last inspection is final, means everything completed, all the interior completed, exterior completed. So that's for a new building. 
those are the uh, mandatory inspection. Okay, now if you have a septic system, this is another permit. Um, if you are in an area where in the your building is not serviced by the township, wala pa siyang septic uh, uh, sewer line from the township, you have to have your own septic system. So there are four inspections, the septic hole, septic base, septic install, and septic final. So kailangan itawag to uh, at every stage of the construction of septic system. Okay, when you are adding a deck or when you're creating a deck or rebuilding a deck, kailangan mo nang, and then you apply for a deck uh, permit, uh, there are three inspections for a deck. One is the footing, um, it, and then the framing, and then the final inspection. In, 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 in a deck wherein they are just, uh, there's no roof above the deck, uh, the framing and the final inspection can be done at the same time. Okay, so when you're demolishing a building, so uh, there uh, you might you, there's a case that you might be needing a demolition permit. So when you are issued uh, a demolition permit, uh, isa lang ang inspection niya, final inspection. Once everything are demolished and you clear the site from any debris, so one inspection. And also the other permit is uh, pool. So dalawang klase ang pool. Uh, above ground pool and then the below ground pool. So again, one inspection only. Once you install everything, once you have the pool in place um, and the proper fencing and gate, one final inspection. The same thing with the tent. Um, dito sa area namin, um, they, may mga activity na outdoor. They, they, they want to uh, build a tent. So they apply for a tent permit. And then um, once we issue that, they can install the tent. One final inspection also, also for the tent. Okay. I guess um, the past few slides I presented, they're all words. Uh, it's not easy to understand what I'm saying without showing something. So I guess you might need some, some photos so that you can visualize them. Sir, so, I have a quick question uh, before you showed your photos. Um, yeah. So when you apply a building permit, um, there is a building inspector, there is a HVAC inspector, and a plumbing. Um, but I'm curious, sir, um, yung mga sewer, uh, siguro it's under plumbing inspector yung, tapos yung mga concrete uh, footing is under the building inspector, correct? Or the, the building part of... Um, Majority of the building official, like me, um, mm -hmm. we are qualified um, um, for. I'm 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 qualified for all the, the categories of qualification. Okay. So we have to be qualified for a house, which means that if you're qualified only for a house, you can only do house inspection. Uh, if if and then if you need to be qualified to do a small building large building, complex building, uh, you we need to be qualified for a plumbing, a plumbing house, plumbing old building, it's back and building services to do the mechanical work. Those inspector need to be qualified before they can do such kind of inspection. So um, most cases they are qualified for those categories. So, um, Possibly, sa isang project, isa lang na inspector ang babalik-balik, okay. pero magkakaiba siyang uh, inspection okay. pack. Be because they're qualified for to do planning, to do heads back, to do framing. Uh, ganon. Um, ganon ang uh, usual case. If it's uh, just a residential um, projects. Yeah. So, ang qualification lang lang kailangan nila is a uh, small building or a house. Uh, pag, pag multi unit, dapat uh, small building, they need to be qualified for small building. And they will not be, they cannot go to the site, do inspection if they're not qualified. That's against uh, the building code. Uh, as a building official, just a background, we are appointed. We are not, we are hired by the current employee. We are employed by the township, but we are appointed by the council. 
So dada ng appointment, may mga bylaws yan to appoint Mini as a building official or kung sino man. Dadaan siya ng appointment. And it's not, they, we are not directly hired by the by the HR department. So by appointment, may bylaw to appoint me as a building official. Uh, did I answer the question, Dennis? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. Let's uh, show some photos. Um, para medyo maganda. Um, I, uh, okay. Footing inspection. Para magkaroon tayo ng konting idea about what are we doing outside? What are the inspection? So, um, we our discussion for today is about residential occupancy. Uh, it's uh, by in the building code. It's a group C. Group C is a residential occupancy. What are uh, residential occupancy? What's what's a group C residential occupancy? So they are they 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 are building. They are houses, they are apartments, they are group uh, building, uh, boarding houses, lodging house, hotel, motel, group homes, shelters for homeless, uh, uh, multi-unit uh, dwelling unit. So yun is, uh, they are residential, they are group C residential occupancy. So ang, ang residential occupancy uh, na, na, na hadi sa dalawa, um, they are part nine, which is a small building, and a part three, large building. They are both residential occupancy, group C residential occupancy. Ang pinagkaiba lang, ang part nine, small building, they are building that are three story or less, or um, 600 square meter in building area or less. So small buildings, yeah, part nine, small building, residential occupancy. Ang large building, part three, large building, no residential, they are, those are buildings that are more than three story. Uh, those are buildings that are more than 600 square meter in building area. So alba mga high rise na siya, four story na apartment. So large building na siya. Um, o kaya um, yung area niya, yung, yung footprint, yung main floor is more than 600 square meter in building area, yung, yung main floor only. So large building siya pag more than 600 square meter. So nahati na, na uh, yung group C into two, part nine small building and part three uh, large building. Sa, sa, uh, sa atin as a real estate investor, ang pagkakaintindi natin, pag... Uh, uh, pag uh, duplex, triplex, and fourplex, they are residential. Pag more than fourplex na siya, fiveplex na siya, pataas, commercial building na siya. Eh. Ganun ang uh, mindset, ang terminology sa, as a real estate investor. Kahit sa bank, ganun siya. Pero sa building code, ang group si residential can either be a part nine small building or part three large building. Yan ang pinagkaiba niya sub building code okay and i'm showing here a, a photo about the footing inspection so before they pour they have to have the four marks in place um, and they have to have the rebars use in, in some cases they they specified rebars long longitudinal rebars Okay, so you check it out and make sure that the layout complies with the foundation drawing. Okay, and in this Canada, um, they also uh, uh, they can also uh, um, construct footing during the winter time. Wala si non stop eh. Kahit winter, they dig, they excavate, they pour concrete. So during winter winter season, um, kailangan um, when they pour the concrete of the um, um, of the footing, kailangan um, after pouring they have to provide cold weather protection. And meaning um, when the air temperature is below five degrees, okay, air temperature is below five degrees Celsius, concrete shall be kept at a temperature of not less than ten, 
or not more than 20, 25 degrees while being mixed in place. And they have to maintain the temperature of the concrete for not less than 10 degrees Celsius for three days. That's 72 hours. So dito, after they, if we are give the approval to pour, um, they should provide uh, insulation, a blanket, and, and, um, and hot air for three days just to maintain the temperature of the concrete to be not less than 10 degrees. Otherwise, magkakaroon ng problema, hindi siya magkukure, magkukure properly on concrete. Okay, also, if there's a standing water, they have to remove the standing water prior to pour. Um, the concrete that they use, they are not, uh, they are they are designed without water. So unless they use a special kind of concrete, um, then they can pour if there's a standing water. Most cases, that's not the case. Another issue too, if the water table is too high, it's close to the uh, base of the foundation, then they have to change the footing size. They have to double the footing size. If the distance of the water table below the base of the foundation is uh, the same as the width of the footing, then they have to double the size of the uh, foundation, the wall footing. So in Canada, ang tawag nila dito sa mga footing na to is wall footing. Sa atin, usually we use the term strip footing. Uh, yun ang term. Pareha lang sila. Okay. So the next inspection is foundation. So nakapour na sila ng, 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 ng footing. Um, yung foundation, karamihan ng foundation is dito sa Canada, they are not reinforced. So they can pour the foundation and before they backfill, they have to call for a foundation inspection. Usually foundation inspection, they we call it backfill inspection. Meaning we, uh, we have to check the drainage layer over dump proofing, uh, yung, 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 yung black part na yan, they are, um, uh, nandyan yung dump proofing, parang asphalto siya, and then they apply uh, the drainage layer. We have to check that. Also, this, uh, they have to, we, we have to check that they have, they install the weeping tiles all around the building um, that need the weep, weeping tiles. Kailangan may cover sa ng, uh, a clear stone uh, at least six inches um, also if they have a basement window well whip if they have a, a, a window well kailangan magkakabit din sila ng basement window well weepers so we check that make sure they are in place before we allow them to backfill okay the, the picture here on the right this is a picture about uh, like sec creating a second exit to the basement so again, um, same thing, bago nila backfill, kailangan na may may inspect namin uh, to check, just to make sure and to document uh, uh, those uh, uh, construction, what they completed. Sir, can I, have a, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Um, usually, how long does it take pag uh, tapos ng pouring, uh, gano katagal yung backfill? Gano katagal po siya pwedeng i-backfill? Uh, in my, in my, kasi ang, ang concrete kasi, um, pag, if they are properly cured, uh, in seven days, they can achieve 70% of the required strength. Approximately. Okay, so about 20 megapascal siya. So at seven, in, in seven days time, 70% ang, ang strength niya. Um, kasi nagtrabaho ko dati sa batching plant, yun ang mga based from testing, yun ang ideal case. So seven days, 70% um, ang strength na siya. Um, and also, one, one thing you have to take note um, is that um, um, <clears throat> Kailangan na pag binaibabakfil mo siya, um, in, in, if, if, the, if the foundation is designed to be laterally supported at the top, you have to, before you backfill the full height, you have to make sure that you have, the, you have, you have a bracing 
or you have the soft flooring in place. So, yun ang case. Otherwise, you can backfill only to a certain height. Um, four feet okay. uh, for the foundation wall. I see. So, kung let's say, uh, kung magbabackfill ka, uh, kailangan mo na rin i-backfill yung inside and outside up to the certain height para hindi, hindi siya gumalaw, para hindi siya mag-cave in. That's the whole idea. Yeah, yeah. Kailangan either na i-brace, i-brace mo siya, or ilagay, i-apply, ilagay mo na yung soft flooring, which in most cases, hindi nangyayari. I see. Sir, yung seven days, is that also applicable to ICF? Um, or the temperature also? <laughs> ma mahirap sagutin yun eh. Um, kasi masyadong uh, pang... Uh, depende sa height ng backfill mo eh. Kung mataas masyadong height mo, i-check yan na... Uh, Usually, an engineer can do the quick math about that. Uh, and uh, uh, depending on height, um, kung the seven, kung the seventy percent stretch is adequate uh, for backfilling. M maybe si Sir Lerbin makaka, baka makashare si Sir Lerbin about that. Uh, thank so, you, Sir. Bale ang ano yan na uh, Glen. Depende dun sa lateral force ng lupa eh. Tama si Sir Wini, ang problema kasi doon, pag, pag nag-backfill ka, tapos yung kabilang side mayroong active pressure ng lupa. So kailangan mo lagyan ng bracing. Yung sinasabi ni Sir Wini na 70% kasi, uh, pwede ka naman mag-backfill without 70%, pero kailangan mo ng propping. So yung formworks na mag ensure na yung formworks mo, hindi bibigay. Yung 70% kasi is allowed siya pag yung concrete mo matibay na siya. So, kumbaga, naging niya na yung 70% na strength niya. So, kumbaga, yung propping mo minor na lang. So, yung sa ICF, I think uh, parehas din ng, ng way para sa concrete. Ang difference lang kasi sa ICF, meron siyang insulated na styrofoam foam. So, yung propping mo, mahirap maglagay ng propping sa sa ganun, sa ICF. So, kailangan uh, properly supported siya o brace. Yun lang ang, ang ano ko. Ang masasabi ko na. na. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, salamat, sir. Sir, sir Lervin. Okay. Uh, also, just to continue, pag, pag, may, pag if, your, if your wall is reinforced, we have to also they have the owner or the contractor need to call for inspection also we have to check the rebars before you pour concrete just to ensure and to documents uh, before the concrete pour that you have the proper reinforcement so ito, it, this one is an icf wall um, okay um the next inspection is uh framing framing inspection. So I showed here uh, three types of building that they're doing. The first one, um, it, this is a chicken farm building. Um, so ang ginamit, when they apply for the building permit, the lawang code ang ginamit dito. One is uh, the farm building code and then the entire building code. So we, we, we tend to check it based from the farm building code. Because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a chicken farm building. Okay, and this one here in the middle, this is a accessor building. Um, so above they have there's they, they have a small storage area, and below this is where they store their farm equipment. So again, when they are applying for a permit for something like this accessory building, if they're going to be using the upper structure uh, for storage, we usually ask for the loading that the that it, it will be designed. Okay, because a storage building, con con regular live load land or um, then they have to make sure that it's clearly specified. But if they're going to be using this area on the upper level as a storage, they'll, they'll be putting heavy uh, heavy um, 
items, and then the flooring need to be designed properly. So that need to be indicated in the drawings. So that's during the uh, permit application stage. Uh, the, 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 the one on the right, this is a, a framing for a house. And, uh, and, and the house has a basement. So this is the, um, the, the framing in the basement, just to show you um, the framing uh, inspection. Just, just want to give some idea about what, what is a framing inspection. Okay. So it, uh, it are, these are some of the inspection that we conducted, uh, that I conducted. Uh, one example here is uh, we have a, a, a girder truss, it's a single ply only. Um, and then for sure the, you have to provide it to support it with a built up column. Uh, two ply might be adequate and properly nailed all the way down. And then the, that built up column needs to be supported by solid blocking below. Again, solid blocking below the, in, in the flooring. And then below that, another built up column to transmit the load down to the foundation wall. So that's the idea. Um, you run the load from the top going down up to the basement. So here I'm showing here the built up column. So the solid blocking below, solid blocking. Here, um, the photos on the middle lower part nakikita mo yung built up column yung, and then yung support below the solid blocking hindi siya magkatapat so these are this is one of the uh, issues on site that they miss so this is why this is why as a building inspector we have to make sure that we check this because otherwise kung ito lumusot ito problema to eh yung load niya hindi matatransfer papunta sa foundation para lang lulusot lang itong column niya eh dapat properly align ang, ang built-up column sa solid blocking. Um, also, on the wall intersection, um, the wall intersection, they need to be nailed at least uh, every 30 inches on center maximum by code for a part nine building. And also, all the connections. Uh, nowadays, uso uso na yung mga metal fasteners from the engineer, the floor joist to the beam, to the LBL, LBL to, to the girder. Um, they usually design it using a metal fastener, either a MyTech or Simpson Strong Tech. So the other inspection too is it's back wrapping in. So we have um, here the uh, low wall uh, return and the high wall return. Okay, in the basement, we are showing here a the supply air which is close to the floor. Um, so ASRAE, um, mayroon dun is the uh, condition wherein they balance the the supply air. Fifty percent of the supply air need to be close to the floor, and fifty percent should be on the ceiling, so that there's a balance of air hot and cold. Because um, usually, yung warm air, uh, they are lighter so they tend to rise up and then the cold air is denser because mayroon some water so kung lahat makikita mo sa mga other basement lahat ng supply air nasa ceiling lahat eh uh, magka, may magka problema tayo doon kasi yung yung pag during winter kung na lahat ng supply air nasa taas lang nasa ceiling hindi siya makababa so mangyayari malamig sa basement hindi magiging balance so, mas maganda pag basement, para na kung walk out, 50% of the supplier need to be close to the floor. That's an ASRAE requirement. Okay, uh, also here, um, for ETSBA crafting in, we just need to see that there's a blackout for the uh, parang abang to para sa floor uh, supply air. Okay, so yun ang just a, just a very basics for ETSBA crafting in inspection. Again, Yung mga ducting niya, we check them during occupancy sa basement. Kasi karami na basement, they are not finished. So we check the ducting, the full ducting during occupancy inspection. Pero pag finished basement siya, kailangan yung bago nila iksara, dapat ma-check namin na nakakabit na natin ducting. Sir, I have a question on the supply air. Sir. 
So if it's an existing uh, uh, renovation sa basement, if we found that the supply air is in the ceiling, so ang asher is kung gusto mo uh, uh, magpa duplex legal conversion, um, you would have to advise na i, i relocate talaga yung ano yung supply air. Ang, ang suggestion po dyan is 50% uh, of the supply air need to be close to the floor. Uh, the, uh, the other 50% can be on the ceiling. So, nice. mag-extend ka lang uh, ng, ng, ng ducting para may baba mo sa floor. Okay. Para lang magkaroon ng, you know, maganda yung kanya, yung temperature sa loob. Um, uh, kasi karamihan na, na basement, uh, pag... Uh, uh, when they uh, karamihan mga bahay ngayon pag ginawa, hindi unfinished lagi ang basement eh. tapos yung mga ducting niya, nakaabang lahat, nasa ceiling lahat eh. so pag unfinished mo siya mas maganda, ibaba mo yung iba yung 50%, ibaba mo siya para maka magkaroon ng magandang circulation ng cut and cold yun ang suggestion ko again, uh, it's not clearly specified sa building code about about that uh, building code will tell you to to go to ASRAE. ASRAE will tell will will specify those kind of uh, location it's not directly in the building code parang parang kanyan parang parang concrete eh. uh, some some of the stuff in the concrete um, it's not specifically in the code they'll get to csa 823 and then, then say CSA Agent 3, it has all the standards. So, ganon. Ganon ang, uh, ganon ang pag, pag cross reference ng mga, ano, mga technical items, technical things na kailangan gawin. Uh, are, are we good for that, uh, Dennis? Yes, yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, uh, another. Um, Inspection is the plumbing. So plumbing, marami siya eh. Um, yung, yung isang inspection sa plumbing is building drain. Nasa basement level, by code minimum sa basement, 4 inches uh, building drain. Tapat na kabit na siya. Uh, it, they have to be sloped properly. So uh, by code, we have to run a ball test just to ensure that uh, it has the proper slope. So, ang um, ball test as per OBC Division B 7361 sentence 5, a ball test shall be carried out on the sanitary building drain. Building drain are inside the building. The sanitary building sewer, they are outside the building. And if there's a storm, uh, storm building drain and storm building sewer, they, you have to conduct a ball test. These lines, the center and the storm, they are four inches, so you have to run the ball test. Some municipalities, township, uh, they don't use ball tests. They some uh, some of them they they prefer water tests. So um, again, there's a clean out before the building they leave the building. So dito pag my ball test, si huhulog sa dulo. And then sasaluin bago lumabas ng building, yung bola, yung billiard ball. And, and, and same thing if, if it's a water test, pupunoyin ng tubig, yung line, dapat walang, walang singaw. And then uh, tatanggalin yung plug, um, and then, then they'll check that the water is flowing out to the building. <laughs> so ganun ang, kwan, uh, ganun ang isa sa testing, uh, ball test uh, or water test for the building drain. And then they have to record also if in the bathroom, if in the basement, there's a, kung may abang siya para sa a bathroom, kung three-piece washroom siya, uh, meron siya kapag. Okay. Um, drainage waste band. This is another inspection for plumbing. So, ang um, drainage waste band, um, they have to be the, the lines need to be installed and then uh, kung yung horizontal uh, lines niya, uh, they have to be supported also at every kung PVC, every four feet maximum support. So they, we must have a proper hangers. Um, 
um, and also if if the the uh, the this uh, sanitary line or the band crosses the stud, um, they have to be provided with a metal plate, uh, and the 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 intent for this metal plate, uh, I kung uh, ilalagay nila yung kakabit nila drywall. Um, pag tinira nila ng, ng nailing uh, ng screw, sana pag, na, pag may pipe dapat hindi abot ng pipe. So they provide this metal metal uh, plate just to protect the pipe from being penetrated by the screw or nail. So isa, isa yun sa mga requirement. Again, this uh, drainage waste bin, we have to conduct a, a testing. So dalawang class and test niya, either they they have the testing need to be for 15 minutes, either at three meters water column, meaning um, uh, kailangan lagyan lang too big yung linya, yung drainage waste band, pati yung wet band and dry band, lagyan lang too big for three meters, ng walang leak for 15 minutes, um, or um, during uh, winter ayaw nila lang too big kasi baka mag freeze. Eh. So, ginagamit na nila ng air. So, lalagyan nila ng air. Air pressure 5 PSI or 35 kPa, kilopascal. Uh, uh, as long as hindi bumaba yung pressure for 15 minutes, uh, ma-maintain nila at least 5 PSI. That's another way of testing the drainage waste bed. Dad, hmm. how much okay. The water line. So, the water line, same thing. Pag ikabit na nila yan, hot and cold water line, uh, yung mga roughing niya, kailangan din i-testing siya. So, there's two ways to test the hot and cold water line. Um, either, number one is, uh, either they put a, a 145 PSI water pressure for at least one hour. Um, karamihan, they prefer to uh, uh, test that the line with 100 PSI air for at least two hours. Mas maganda yung air, at least hindi nababasa, saka 100 PSI lang. Uh, 100 PSI air pressure for at least two hours. So here, there's a gauge that they have to install on site. So when we arrive for inspection, we check this gauge, make sure it's still 100 PSI, and that's it, it's, it's safe. So that's one way <clears throat> to test it, either water pressure or air pressure. Um, again, now all this hot and cold water line, um, they have to be supported by a proper fastener. Sa mga old building na papansin ko, uh, they, uh, some of them, they have the copper, copper pipes. So, nangyayari, makikita mo yung mga hangers niya, they use nail, metal nail. That's not allowed. Kasi magkaibang material eh. Copper, yung pipe, tapos yung nail is metal. Kakaroon siya ng reaction. Hindi, to, hindi tama to. So this is for old building. So another inspection is air barrier. So they have to be taped, properly sealed prior to putting the cladding. Bihira namin itong gawin eh. Kasi um, napakadali naman itong kwan eh. Um, in, the, in most cases, we don't do air barrier inspection unless it's a part three building. Yung mga malaking building na and, uh, gumagamit ng ibang klaseng air barrier, rigid insulation na air barrier, uh, yeah, they request for air barrier inspection. But for apartment building, rarely we check the air barrier. Okay, insulation. So after the framing, pumasa na sa framing, they pass the framing inspection, uh, they pass the etzbach wrapping inspection, the plumbing wrapping inspection, pwede na siyang insulate. So when they insulate, um, they have to make sure that they insulate properly with the proper uh, um, um, insulation, kung anong R value siya nakadesign, kung R20, uh, R24, kung anong compliance package siya naka-design. And then they have to be, uh, they put the bat insulation and then they put the um, paper barrier. They need to be taped around, uh, sealed properly. And uh, same thing kung sa ceiling, um, may mga opening siya, kailangan 
tape siya properly or sealed properly. Um, in the floor, um, uh, yung mga linya, sanitary line na galing sa sa banyo, sa water, sa, sa washroom, may mga linya siya. Minsan malaki yung butas. Um, they, they, yung, yung, yung butas niya need to be, um, you have to provide fire blocking. Pag malaki yung butas, kailangan i-fire block mo siya for smoke. Okay, yun ang, yun ang naka required sa building code. Um, uh, we don't want smoke to transfer from upper to lower um, and vice versa. So they have to be fire block. The term that the code uses to fire blocking. So you can do the fire blocking in two ways. One is to put the bat insulation. It common as siya, fill mo lang siya. Yung kung ano man ang gap meron sa flooring. Or you can put the spray foam. So that's either or will work. Okay, uh, this case here, another insulation inspection in the basement. So this is a case where in uh, uh, when the entire slab is within 600 millimeter of the exterior ground level. So this is usually in the walkout basement. Kung ang flooring ng level ng slab niya sa basement is within the 600 millimeter of the exterior ground level, the entire surface of the slab need to be insulated. So R10. And bago, before you, they, they pour the concrete in the basement, they have to put insulation. So this is one, one, one simple um, inspection that we did, I did last time. Okay, now fire separation. So it's a uh, fire separation is required uh, in multi-unit building. Um, it also in uh, part two building. Ay mga corridor niya kailangan par separated siya may meron siyang required uh, rating sa mga walls um, we have to inspect that uh, they make sure that they have the proper assembly na that will meet the required uh, rating of the wall or, or ceiling or floor so kailangan inspect any penetration like if the far separation is being penetrated by a pipe uh, they have to uh, provide fire stopping and then those fire stopping need to be the approved product okay for fire stopping so kailangan yan sealed din yan because it's a fire separation okay and also doors um, if if the door is located within the fire separation kailangan yung door mo rated door din, din siya rated for fire so if the wall is uh, uh, Assuming it's a one hour for separation, the door needs to be around 45 minutes. So here I'm showing here uh, a table in from TAC book. Um, uh, this is one of the standard that the building we shall use as a reference. Uh, and this apply for a part 11 buildings. Uh, part 11 buildings um, are buildings which are more than five years old. Part 11 is a medyo matanda na siya, hindi na siya bago. Uh, part 11 building and then uh, more than five years old, you're doing a renovation, part 11 kicks in of the code. So it's less stringent requirement. So kung may fire separation siya, kung na required 45, it's a new building. Kung, kung, kung uh, more than five years old ang building mo, pwede siya gumamit ng 30 lang. Like for instance, this case here, um, uh, for a part 11 building, uh, 30 minutes lang for separation mo. Uh, they can use a, a half inch type X gypsum board as long as the smoke alarm in both, there's a smoke alarm in both units, 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, lower ang, ang, ang far separation pang part 11 building na siya. Um, and then uh, 15 minutes uh, horizontal far separation. If they have interconnected smoke alarm in both units and in all common areas. Okay, and, and also um, if uh, the building um, is sprinklered, you don't need the fire separation because the building is sprinklered. It's one of the exemption. Again, um, if, if there's a door, uh, uh, like for instance, there's a 20 minute label door, the door in the fire separation need to have a self-closing device. 
So hindi siya kailangan mag-automatically magsasara siya may, may door closer. And also if the apartment floor area is sprinkler, unrated closure. So pag sprinkler siya kahit wala nang rating ang, ang door niya. Okay, so this is just idea for a part 11 building. Kung ang multi-unit mo is more than 11 uh, 5 years old, you can use the Part 11 uh, section of the code, it's a less restrictive requirement um, for, for fire separation. Okay, uh, another thing here is uh, uh, occupancy. So before they occupy the building, they will call for occupancy inspection. So we check the requirement. Uh, I'm showing here some of the, uh, some of the requirement, uh, not all, like um, for a new building, for a new house, for instance, Kailangan yung flooring niya sa uh, in, uh, all the finished flooring in bathroom, kitchen, public entrance halls, laundry in general, storage area shall consist of water resilient flooring. So ito, kaya sa pagpasok mo, dapat water resilient yan ang flooring niya. There's different types of water resilient flooring. You can use also, you can use also other products. Um, another requirement is in the entrance door. So the, the entrance door to dwelling shall have resistance to force entry. The door shall be provided with that deadbolt. And the code reference is OBC Division B 9752. And those are, this is the deadbolt. Required against the entrance. Uh, again, one of the stuff that we check is the host bib. So on host bib, where a host bib is installed, either outside the building, inside the garage, or where there is an identifiable risk of contamination, um, the portable water system shall be protected against backflow by backflow preventer. So ito meron na siyang built-in backflow preventer. So kung may hose siya, nakakabit sa pool, pwedeng masakti yung water niya from the pool going into the uh, uh, water line inside the building. So, uh, hindi dapat makontaminate yun. So, kailangan may backflow preventer. So, built in na siya sa, sa ganitong klaseng hose bib. So, before, pag walang ganito, hindi siya, wala sa backflow preventer, hindi siya allowed. Another thing, this is for occupancy for a house. I did this one a couple of months ago. Um, so, for stairs, Wow, maganda na siya. Um, occupancy inspection. So napansin namin na ang stair papunta sa basement, meron siyang leads. So, wow. Um, 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 this is uh, something that we all we sometimes found out when they're doing uh, when we're doing occupancy. Ito, there's a risk involved here. Kasi mga bata, nangyayari, tatawid, papunta doon. Mga katawid, problema magbalik din na mga kapihit, mangyari, mga hulog. Pag nahulog, di may masaktan, risk yun. So, in this case, we ask to be to provide either a guardrail para hindi ang, ba ang mga bata hindi makapunta doon sa dulo. Pag ganit sa ganit yung case. So, yeah, they put the temporary guard, uh, then we give them occupancy. So, this is a one simple, you know, idea why there, if there's a risk, nandung kami to catch it before we give them occupancy. Uh, another one here for occupancy, although this the cladding is not installed, um, yung from the kitchen, there's a difference in level from the kitchen door going to the outdoor. So by code, the riser need to be at least 200 millimeter or eight inches max. Ito masyadong sobra. So kailangan maglagay siya ng step. So they provide the temporary step. Uh, temporary platform. So, yeah, so there's no safety concern. That's good. That's good. Uh, it passed the inspection for occupancy. Again, ito naman sa kabila dito. I'm just showing it. Um, they order a costume handrail. Kung saan nila in order, matagal daw ang delivery. They want to occupy the house. So they put a temporary handrail. So the temporary handrail um, it's uh, strong enough to withstand the load. Um, 
um, and all the openings are met. The code requirement for opening are met. The height are met. So, and then occupancy, so just by putting a temporary uh, handrail for the stairs. Again, we make note that they are they installed temporary handrail. Okay, same thing here during occupancy. Um, Meron difference in, in level. Um, hindi, hindi pa nila na, na may ngayon na yung occupancy, wala pa yung deck. So the solution here is we can give you occupancy as long as you block the door. Means ipapadlock nila yung door or lalagyan nilang ng harang na hindi yung magbubuksan. So pwede na bigyan ng occupancy yan. As long as hindi nila gamit yung pinto kasi wala pa siyang deck. And same thing here, they are missing a step because it's the risers, the difference in levels more than eight inches. So in the big biglang, biglang baba, but at least eight inches long for one step down down. Another issue here for a people is the stair. This is from the garage going into the house. So by code, um, this is considered as, uh, we consider this one as an exterior stair from the garage going to the house. So maximum without handrail is three riser. Three riser maximum, you don't need a handrail. So here we got one, two, three, four, five. So now they need a guard. At least one guard needs to be installed. So this is a no-no. So kailangan maglagay ng guard muna kay temporary for safety reason. Again, another one here, a stair going to the basement. Uh, this is an uh, interior stair. So without handrail, or we, you can only go up to two riser for interior stair. So this is way down, more than two riser, kailangan mo ng uh, guard, at least one guard. But this is one of the requirements too. So this is a fail. We have to be, we have to re-inspect re again. Okay, simple uh, sample here for a very free washroom. And sometimes they call it universal washroom. There's a lot of requirement. This is usually for, uh, for a restaurant, for a non-house non uh, building, um, a, a mall, factory buildings. Uh, ng, uh, they need to be designed for very free. So they have to ensure that they have the bare free path of travel, the door, proper door, laboratories, water closet, and grub bars. It's important, the grub bars. Uh, then uh, the distance, the uh, internal dimension at less than 1.7 meters, a coat hook, a wheelchair to turn in open space, and the door need to be equipped with the door operator, power door operator. So you know, door niya, kailan. the mirror, and then the lighting, uh, they have to have uh, a lighting need to be controlled by a motion sensor. This is for a bare free washroom. Okay, this final inspection, like there's a three uh, building here, three structure, one is the shed. So final inspection, tapos na lahat, labas sa kalog, and uh, yung shed naman, hindi naman siya heated and finish hello so this one will pass the uh, final inspection as per drawing okay another one here is the detached garage uh, this detached garage it's being used by the homeowners to store their uh, old mobile old, or old uh, car a uh, luxury car <laughs> so it's uh it's quite it's heated uh, uh, detached garage so it's already finished product yeah, for final inspection Another one here is the portable, uh, bare free portable office with a simple county district school board. I inspected this one last time, last month. So, there's some bare free ramp, there's some portable fire extinguisher, fire alarm system. Uh, built structure like this, portable um, office, we, when we conduct the inspection, we have a joint inspection with the fire department. So, yeah, any kind of non-house, um, kailangan during the final inspection or occupancy inspection, we involve the fire department. Kasi ang nangyayari niyan, as a building official, kami, we only 
we are only liable during construction. Pag natapos na yung project, ang sasalo na ng responsibility ng fire department na. So bago nang bigyan ng occupancy, dapat um, it comply with the fire code, with the fire department requirement. So kailangan kasabay sila na magbibigay ng kas kailangan ko ang, ang clearance sila fire department clearance to give them occupancy para they are satisfied that they met their fire code requirement. So final inspection, tapos na lahat, labas loob ng bahay. They, some, uh, in, in cases like new subdivision, they provide the lot grading certificate. Okay, septic system. So my septic system, one inspection is test hole. And the test hole is to check the percolation time or tea time of the soil. Uh, so it depends on what kind of soil they have on site. Um, uh, so that we, we dis they designed the septic system based on the tea time of the soil. Uh, in this case here, this is a, um, a case where in, uh, hindi na gumagana yung existing septic system nila. Uh, puno na yung septic tank and then uh, the bed cannot accommodate any more seaweeds. Cannot accommodate any more effluent. Kung siya, sat fully saturated na yung bed niya eh. So nagkaroon kami ng test hole, then chinek, totoo nga, kalag na siya eh. Masyado nang mataas yung saturated na siya masyado. So um, itong, when, when they dig the hole, automatic, no? basta rin yung, yung effluent. So this is a failed septic system already. So kailangan dito, i-pump out yung laman ng septic tank and then uh, gagawa sila ng bagong bed. So in this case here, uh, hindi na sila pwedeng gumawa ng bed below grade. So ang bed nila is going to be a raised bed system. So that's, that's the uh, plan that they have for this. So uh, next inspection for septic is the septic base inspection. This is for the bed. So here, this is the uh, in-ground bed. They excavate, they scarify the soil. For a raised bed, konti lang yung scarified nila. And then they're putting on top the raised bed. And then the next inspection for septic is septic install. They install the septic tank, the pump, or the, the tank where they have the pump, and then the, uh, the distribution pipes. So race bed siya, and then distribution pipe. So the flow, the what the septic tank will store all the waste, and it will create some kind of uh, 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 bacterial uh, digestion there, then lalabas niya uh, from the pump, liquid na lang siya. So yung liquid niya ipapump up pataas dito sa raised bed. Kaya lang kaya may pump eh. So and then from pagpasok ng pag pinump up yung, yung effluent na liquid, lalabas sa mga tubo. Yung tubo, this, this pipe, they are all perforated pipe. So it will percolate to the, to the soil down below. So ganun ang treatment process ng 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 in purpose ng ng distribution pipe uh, to to the effluent will need to percolate to the to the soil. So yeah. And then this is the inspection for septic install. After we inspect the septic, they approve it and then they can put now the filter plot which is what they have here and they they can put the top soil. So a layering ng ng raised filter bed for this they have the below, they have the 300 millimeter clear stone for the filter bed, 750 millimeter fine sand or filter sand for the contact area, and then the mantle below, the natural mantle, the natural soil. So, yun, yun ang idea behind the septic, septic tank or septic system. <clears throat> okay, this one here is was a, just a quick example for a deck. So this one is based from the, the, the foundation. There's no footing inspection. The, the deck is supported by helical pile. So uh, the, and for helical pile, we, in, their, in their brochures, uh, it's clearly uh, noted that the professional engineer will provide a report confirming that the loadings, the, lo the loadings that the helical pile can support, can, can support 
Okay, so if this is designed for a certain loading, the, the helical pile a report will, will indicate that, that they install it and it's adequate. So okay, we need the professional engineer report for the helical pile. And one, one other issue here for the stairs. So the stairs, um, they, it's made of wood. Uh, we don't suggest that to be resting directly on soil. So kailangan dito meron some yung, yung string, stair stringer need to be supported on uh, either a precast concrete slab. So this is a, this is a no no. So this is a simple uh, uh, example for a for a deck, deck framing inspection. So meron sa ano tuyo floor floor joists, the board. Ano kaya hindi kaya drawing nila? Lug screw to fasten the the ledger board to the house. Okay, kailangan kini lagay nila um, uh, GRK. And then when we ask for the specification for the GRK, they cannot provide it on site. So we ask them to install what is indicated in the drawing, which is a lug screw. But uh, we, soon re we soon found out later on that the GRK that they installed, they are they, they have the capacity in, for to get support the loading. And also they are intended for outdoor use uh, for a deck. So kung hindi nila nagbigyan sa amin, hindi namin mabibigyan ng, hindi na check. So still, lug screw is common. And GRK is one of the new product. So unless they have uh, brochures to go with the building permit that they are gonna be using GRK, so it, it might be okay. In case they have the, all the proper documentation to meet the intent uh, for the fasteners. Again, um, for a simple deck, metal fasteners, either MyTech or Simpson Strong type. So this is the framing inspection for a deck. So the finished product for that deck, so they have the picket, not more than four inches in center, um, not more than four inches clearance in between pickets. Uh, the uh, the stair stringer need to be resting on, a, on the precast slab. So yun, mga basic stuff, proper height, three feet uh, from the deck flooring. So this is the uh, uh, newly done, newly completed deck. Uh, uh, again, on the other side here, I showed some photos that we have. Um, this is an old photos. You can see, you know, my uh, simple, simple stairs, my handrails. Again, the spacing in between the here, ma, wala, dapat not more than four inches and clearance. Eh. So this is not inspected and done properly as per code. And, and again, the same thing with this one here. Um, uh, this is in Timen, um, one of the property. So uh, exterior stair without handrail, maximum three riser only. So you got one, two, three, Four, five, so five riser down. Di na pwede dapat may magalagyan siya ng at least one one handrail because they it exceeded three riser. Again, another one here. It's <laughs> existing deck. Kikita mo ang support niya ng deck is all black. No good. This is not done properly. And the space and there's an opening, big opening. Mahuhul lang bata yan eh. This is a, a risk. This is not done properly and it's never been inspected by the building department, I'm pretty sure, because of this kind of situation. And the situation of the materials, I don't think this one will, will met the intent for the for the new product. Um, so this is a this one need to be uh, need to be replaced soon. Um, for if you see something like this, it is a no good. Sir, is there a is is there a standard size of a deck that uh, you can apply for a permit or any any size you have to apply for a permit? Um, in in the code, there's a guide. Um, SB seven. There's a different. Uh, there, there's a standard there. Like with this kind of deck that we have, with all the pickets, meron na siyang standard don. Sundan mo na lang yun. Uh, mo yun, hindi. Uh, uh, okay, okay, can I? As long as you, you size properly the beams um, and the spacing between columns, 
and the, you size properly the the sauna tube sundan mo lang yung, yung details ng how they are framed so sb7 in, it's indicated in the building code thank you yeah so yeah so next one here let's just show you here this is our finish final inspection for carport simple lang siya kabit na lahat malinis na siya naka may knee bracing good so this is done final inspection carport additional carport lang siya so good to go so again if you are demolishing a building kailangan mo ng when you're granted for a demolition permit um, you can do the demolition in two ways either mechanical or by hand okay so if you're demolishing a, a existing structure ang kailangan lang namin for final inspection is you the structure was demolished and all the debris was removed from the site so that dapat lalabas ganito na malinis na siya wala nang tambak wala nang garbage so once you have that cleared the site for any debris we can give you final approval for the inspection for the demolition okay pool the long class and pool below ground pool and above ground pool so on pool um the there's a bylaw town bylaw or city bylaw uh, that dictate that 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 identify all the conditions for a pool one is when you have a pool kailangan may fencing so it's a requirement and pag may pool ka kailangan if you fence mo siya all around and when you have the fencing you need a gate the gate uh, need to be self closing self latching and the latch is lockable so my lock yung may spring para self closing siya uh, tapos may lock siya para kung walang gumagamit eh, yung mga bata hindi makapasok so that's intent for safe the reason again uh, kailangan yung pool dapat before they fill it with water kailangan nakatalagay na yung pool ay ah, yung fencing sa kanyang gate at the same time they can only uh, put 18 inches of water, uh, 18 inches of uh, depth of water uh, on the pool. Uh, and then once we approve it, then they can fill the pool with, wa with, with water now. So that's the um, requirement for a below ground pool. Itong case na to, sa side na to, um, what happened is they completed the pool, they, they fill it up with water without inspection. So your neighbor, kabila, ni report sa amin, Nagkunda kami ng investigation. So the building department was there. The bylaw uh, officer was there. And the fire guys was there also. So tatlo kami, magkaibang department, in-inspect namin. Uh, totoo nga, just to confirm the information, the pool, it was filled with water. Wala pa siyang inspect approval from building department. Wala pa siyang fencing. So this is a no-no. We cannot cannot fill the pool with water until we we, we give them um, approval so mangyari sa ang case dito ang safety ang, ang case dito is wala pa siyang fencing so yung mga bata ang ba, may bata either from the house or from the neighbor can go to the pool kung malunod problema yan kasi wala silang harang hindi nila finance yung area mga susuyong owner Kasi kahit trespassing yung, yung, yung mga bata, kahit, kahit animal, mga pet, kung makapunta dyan yung aso, yung pusa, mahulog, malunod, wala pang fencing. Eh. So possibly baka masu yung owner. So yun, kailangan ang pool bago malagyan ng water, kailangan may proper fencing for a below ground pool. So all are safety concerned. That's the reason why we are, that's how we do our job as a building official. Okay, another one type of pool is above ground pool. So, pag above ground pool, yung itong case na to, hindi na kailangan ng fencing. As long as the height of the, uh, of the pool is four feet, hindi na kailangan ng fencing dyan. So, they can stall that. Uh, uh, as long as the, the ladder going into the pool it's removable and can be relocated kung hindi ginagamit removable sinya para mabata hindi maka-attack and then the gate 
if, if there's a gate like this one here on the ladder, it needs to be self-latching and lockable. Para kung hindi nila alisin, at least may lock yung pinto para hindi makapasok yung bata. For safety reason again. So that's the reason. So if this one here, they complied. Uh, we inspected that. The problem is, mayroon ng tubig yung pumunta ko. Ang, ang allowed lang is 18 inches. Kalahati na, eh, tupit na yung tubig eh. Sabi ko, hindi pwede yan. Kung may naluno dyan, problema, may problema kayo. So, oh, sorry, sorry there. You know, we are not aware. Okay, so, so 18 inches lang is allowed before that they can put water. Uh, and then we can inspect it, approve it, and then they can fill it up with water. So this is a above ground pool. Again, I was talking to the, to the owner and um, after my inspection, I said, how much it cost for that above ground pool? Sabi niya sa akin, mga 15,000 down. Then they can have a bob gum pool like this. So, but this one here, minimum is 50,000. 50, Laka ng diferencia, no? So, tent, same for a tent. When we're doing inspection for a tent, one inspection only. Um, it's a joint inspection between the building department and the fire department. So what we check here is the pen it, it's installed. Um, since it's a gathering, kailangan ng mga ng sanitary facilities dapat meron sila on site, either portable or pwedeng gamitin yung sa bahay. Usually this is a, in a farm. And kailangan meron fire extinguisher. Um, and then yung clearance to serve as a for exiting kung may mga gathering. How about my thing clearance between uh, between tables between, between chairs? Uh, again, the design of the pool, the proper uh, the, the the materials for the pool, NFPA, NFPA 701, I guess, uh, they need to be labeled. This one need to be labeled. So once they comply with everything, we grant them final uh, final and approval for the tent. Again, tent they are only used for a few days. So after that, they have to remove the tent after the occasion. Okay, so one of the mandatory inspection is this kind of building. So it's quite deteriorated now, unsafe condition as well. So we check this one. Wala na bubong, medyo tagilid na bahay. So this is so one inspection we did. It's unsafe condition now. So we just informed the owner that they have to either fix it. So that's one way. Our, our term is you have to fix to to uh, make it safe because it's unsafe right now. So it's up to them to fix it or demolish it and, and build a new one. Okay, another one here. This is one of the accessory building at the back. Makikita mo talagang dilapidated na siya eh. Mula ng bubong, tanggal na ibang bubong. Uh, yung material siya, may mga uh, it appears na may mga decay na siya eh. Hindi na siya uh, suited for for use. So as a building official, we give them an order. The order we gave them is order to remedy and safe building. So we post them on site uh, telling them that we have to remedy. So again, it's up to them to fix it or demolish it. But we don't use the term to demolish. We, we, the order that we gave them is order to remedy and safe building. Okay, so uh, before um, malapit na tayo sa dulo, um, I have a couple of questions for all of you guys. Maybe you can help me out, uh, give me an answer for this. Okay. Question, uh, can a professional engineer report or general review replace a prescribed inspection by a building official? This is one of the common uh, questions that somebody will tell me, especially for a part three building. Meron kami engineer dito, hindi na namin dapat tawagan kayo to do the inspection because we have an engineer report. Is this is this correct? Um, there's no right or wrong answer for this, but maybe take a guess. What's the, what's your, 
What do you think? Sir Sir Durbin. Uh, ang alam ko sir, di ba, inaalaw ni yung ano, parang kulang yata yung building inspector. So inaalaw na nila yung professional engineer na mag uh, mag provide ng inspection. Uh, as long as uh, under the uh, OBC yung required na inspection. Yan ang pagkakalam. Okay. Um, any more um, who can share something? Dennis? I, I don't think so, sir. Um, kasi uh, may every jurisdiction yan, di ba? So, if you're in the building department, so meron kayong parang authority or something in my opinion okay uh, that, that, that's good that's good okay so okay so uh, two months ago we have uh, a zoom meeting with, with the simco county building official and this is one of the presentation they had and they asked the same question and we run a pool like nagkaroon ng ng ng, ng votation nag, nag pool my vote so and they ask this question so this is the answer so can an engineer report replace a prescribed inspection by building pressure so 80 per 87 percent said no and 30 percent said yes so um, the both answer of sir lerbin and dennis they are pretty much correct uh, the the but the 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 find the majority um, the the way the building official interpret this one here is it's a it's a no um, and and the reason being is that an engineer report may not replace a prescribed inspection by a building official so um and the reasoning here is that the the general review there's two reasons. Um, the first reason is the general review or the professional engineer report um, is regulated under the provisions of the PEO Act and in accordance with the established published guidelines. So um, inspection and professional engineer, it's based on the PEO Act. So they're going to do their part to inspect. So which is also correct. But the other reason too is uh, the building permit is under the Building Code Act. So as a building official, we have to do our inspection um, as per the Building Code Act, as per the entire building code, because it's a mandatory requirement um, uh, to do the inspection. It, 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 cannot, uh, it cannot replace the uh, the report from the professional engineer so uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna read the wording here so as such the report of an engineer may supplement an inspector's prescribed inspection but it may not replace or supersede the prescribed inspection by the building official so ang report namin Sa pag nag-inspect kami, ang report namin, we will use the report from the engineer as one of the bases. Aside from our inspection, yung report from the engineer will be part of our inspection. So if the engineer said this, 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 confirming everything, and, and, and we went to the site, and then we agree with the report, we'll just make note also of that, that we agree with the report of the engineer, and it, that's, it, it adds to the building official report. So that's the the reasoning behind it. So hindi pwede hindi pwede ma hindi pwede maalis yung uh, mandatory uh, requirement and uh, maginspect ng building official. Uh, yung engineer report will be added to our report. So the the answer is both correct, basically. But majority the way they interpret that, it, it's no, no. So another uh, question here. This is very common also. If previous inspections have been missed or if there are outstanding deficiencies, can an occupancy permit be issued? Uh, example here, ang baba, humingi ka na occupancy, pero hindi mo pa, hindi, hindi pa naipapasa yung insulation inspection or framing inspection, 
that's me and now we can see so what do you think can they be granted occupancy if they miss some of the previous inspection any try sir sir there been again sagot ko sir no kasi may deficiency pa eh. hindi pwedeng i-occupy yung place sangat walang i mean hindi na close yung inspection okay yun ang yeah. ano ko yep yeah. uh, any more try uh, Dennis or anyone no no then sir okay so the answer for this we run the pool it's a no it's 76% <laughs> so no so um i'm gonna read read the the interpretation again it's a no um, so the previous inspection had been missed if, if or if there are outstanding the pieces can an occupancy be issued it's a no so this will depend largely on on the manner of the deficiencies in the internal process and procedure that are accepted within the township building department so Outright answer is a no, kasi hindi mo na kompleto yung mandatory inspection eh. But again, other township, other township, um, because we, we have to balance code compliance at the same time good customer service. So, alimbawa, na-miss nila yung, yung hindi sila na-approbahan dun sa insulation. May, cool, may area na hindi na, na hindi hindi na kompleto yung insulation. So, alimbawa, insulation. So, hindi partially approved yung insulation. Mayroong iran na hindi pa na-approve. So, may cases na ganyan. Uh, so, okay, hindi pa approved yung insulation inspection. Then, may ganyan na occupancy. May, may sara na yung wall. Kunwari, hindi mo na makita yung insulation. Kung naikabit niya o tama yung naikabit. Kung ano yung R value as per drawing. So, kung hindi ng occupancy magdidepende na yan sa chief building official um, ang tanong diyan is may risk ba yan ang tanong diyan eh. kung framing kung hindi na check ang beams uh, columns structural yan so risk may risk talaga uh, alam ba uh, one example is footing ang um, dinesign sa 150 kpa soil bearing pressure Pero hindi siya nag-provide ng soil engineer report to confirm may risk din yun. So, kung may risk, malamang hindi siya nabigyan ng occupancy. Pero kung insulation lang, ano yung risk doon? So, most building officials, CBO, will said no, but some might said yes. But when they give you occupancy for a yes, um, they will indicate what are the deficiencies. It's a conditional yes. We note that um, part of the insulation, for instance, it's not completed. So we make note of, of that. Um, so pwede mabigyan ng people, see, it, depend, it depends on CBO, so it depending depend on the risk involved. So yun ang... <laughs> Yun ang answer. Kaya medyo na hahati yung, ta, yung building official dito. Eh. Tinan mo, 20% nag yes, tapos yung iba, 76, nag no. So yun ang mindset na nakikita nila. So yeah, it's a more on a no for an answer. Okay. Um, okay. Home inspection. Ito na yung mga dati na existing na siya existing na siyang uh, building. So we're conducting, uh, it's not really building inspection, we call it home inspection already. So um, one of the major thing that we check here is the smoke alarm. Um, um, uh, smoke alarm shall be installed in each dwelling unit, each, each sleeping room, uh, each interior shared mean of, means of egress, uh, like corridor. So ito, kailangan yun. Uh, smoke alarm. Um, um, so, <clears throat> so this is a new code. So, uh, eh, kailangan sa bedroom meron. This is based from the 2012 building code. 
and the smoke alarm need to be installed on or near the ceiling. So this one is on the ceiling. Sometimes they put it in the wall, but close to the ceiling. And the location of the smoke alarm, at least one smoke alarm shall be installed on each story, including the basement. So this is the latest, the 2012 building code. So yung mga unang building code noon, prior to 97 code, I checked the 97 code, 2006 building code. Lahat ito, nakalag nakalagay ito eh, na sa bed, every bedroom may required ang smoke alarm eh. Pero yung tinuntang kong isang property, isang, isang nakuha kong property, wala, as, wala sa bedroom eh. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that prior to 97 building code, entire building code, hindi pa required eh. So, yun ang, yun ang case dito. Okay, another one here is the, this example here, this existing uh, uh, under the kitchen, uh, the the sanitary line. So, we have a pit trap and a clean out. That this is the proper way. And as per the the entire building code, part seven for plumbing, uh, if if you have an S trap, that's not allowed as per code. So makakita kayo ng S trap na bumaba, sumakit and then bumaba again. So S trap yun, it's not allowed as per the the entire building code part seven. Okay, this is interesting here. Common problem sa mga existing building. Home inspection, I'm calling it home inspection because it's existing. Wet basement. So this is a common problem. Uh, nakikita natin sa mga kinukuha natin ng property, wet basement. May wet basement siya. Paano natin maayos to? So um, there's a um, there's two way to fix this problem. Um, um, the uh, first way, first option is, uh, uh, because wet basement, dapat walang tubig dyan, eh. the first uh, option here is uh, to stop the water from entering the building, if possible. Pwede ba yun? <laughs> Mukhang magastos yun pag ganun eh. Maka, mukhang hindi feasible, lalo na existing building. So that's one, one option. Um, the other option here, yeah, plan B. So if you cannot stop the water, uh, let the water in, but leave them out from the building. That's the next option. And that's what they did here. So the 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 idea is that um, they should put a, a whipping towel on the exterior side of the foundation, or they can put it inside also to drain the water that's entered the building, and then direct the water to the to a sump pit, and then from the sump pit it needs to be pumped out. So direct it, allow them in direct them to the sump pit and then pump them out. So that's the idea. Let the water in, but lead them out from the building. So you dictate where they should go. So dito, sa ginawa na dito, they create, create a, a, a trenching to, the, to drain the water. And this trenching here, it goes to a sump pit. Meron silang dalawang sump pit sa magkabilang dulo ng building. And then they, they, it, and then there is some floater automatically once the water goes up the floater the, the the pump kicks in and pump the water out so this is one of the solution that they have on site which is the a little bit cheaper way i guess um, to control the water so yep so uh, so can i ask a question Yep. So regarding dito sa may picture na may beeping tiles. Ah, uh, paano kung ang tanong ko lang kasi ang ang floor mo is above dun sa strip footing. Let's say three feet higher than the strip footing. Yung 
location ng weeping tiles dapat ba nandun pa rin sa side ng strip putting or pwede mo siyang iangat? Um, pag, pag magkaibang level ang putting niya, ba, uh, down, may sloping. Can, can, yes sir, uh, ano kasi, um, tawag dito, uh, uh, talagang binaba namin kasi walk out basement. Ang um, meron akong uh, three years ago when I was working in a consulting firm, meron akong ganitong case din eh. Uh, dito sa parting Georgian uh, Georgian Bay, uh, may water sea page eh. Naka, yung bahay, nasa uh, sloping hill. And then on, on rock foundation siya eh. Meron tagas yung tubig. Papasok sa, sa crawl space. Magkaiba yung level ng tubig niya eh. So, the idea is uh, hindi pwede sa labas, ilagay yung weeping tiles, ilagay mo sa loob. As long as you let the water in and then you find the lowest spot where you can drain them out. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. as long as you, you, you let them in, but make sure you drain them out by using a pump. That, that's one way. Or kung slopey siya, gravity flow, gawa ko ng canal para may drain out siya. That's, what, that's one way. What do you think, Sir Lervin? Yeah, Sir. Ang suggestion ko dyan, uh, as long na yung leaping tali, uh, kumbaga nagdi-drain ng water at hindi magkaroon ng scouring yung foundation niya para hindi magkaroon ng settlement. So kung may iba, may didrain niya through weeping tile and then uh, kumbaga mapiprevent yung water na pumasok dun sa ilalim ng pundasyon. Tingin ko yun ang problema kasi kung pumasok yung tubig sa may pundasyon, uh, lalambot yung lupa and then magkikrate siya ng settlement sa foundation which is magkakrack yung foundation niya later on. Yun ang, ano, yun yung sinabi mo, pwedeng sump pump o yung gravity ano, ng pipe para mailabas yung tubig. Gravity flow. Yeah. Thank, thank you, sir. Sir Lerbin. Kami, as a building official, um, we, we give them options. So, uh, cases like that, pag hindi mas mabibigyan ng, sa tingin namin, hindi mabibigyan ng tamang advice yung homeowner, which way which way to go we suggest to we just suggest to the homeowner to uh, ask for a pns report and that do na papasok yung mga professional engineer to give them uh, uh, professional technical advice how to deal with this kind of situation so do na si sir lerbin papasok sa ganun mm, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir kasi ang um, main issue kasi doon kasi um, yung location medyo mababa yung water table so, kapag doon maaaring magnilagay, maaaring maglagi ng aandar yung pump. Yan lang yung uh, main concern. Sir, Sir Lerbin. Uh, ang ano ko kasi dyan, meron ano eh. Meron tinatawag bro na drawdown yung ano eh, yung sump pump mo dati. Kasi may ginagawa na drawdown yung ano, yung kumbaga yung yung weeping tile natin, pwede mag-create ng drawdown na uh, portion doon sa water table mo. So, kumbaga, tama yung point mo na under yung sump pump mo, pero no choice yung ano eh. Kumbaga, as long as tingin ko tama si Sir Winnie na as long na ma-prevent yung uh, pagpasok ng tubig sa basement, at saka yung pagiging maapektuhan yung putting foundation mo, tingin ko pwede mo sigurong i-adjust konti yung weeping tile mo. Just in case. Uh, ewan ko. Okay. okay, sir. Thank you. Pero, pero sir, may tanong din ako, sir Winnie. Okay. Kung, kung ganun ba na, ano, di ba yung tunad nung kaninang tinatanong natin? Kasi pag professional engineer, meron silang pinipirma na commitment to general review. Yeah, correct. So, ang commitment to general review, pero ang gumagawa ng inspection, 
is mostly mga building official so building inspector o ano saan pumapasok sir yung responsibility ng professional engineer para sa commitment to general review um okay magandang that's a very good question um kasi yung commitment for general review hiningi lang namin yon in, in in two cases okay dalawang magkaibang sitwasyon one ang commitment for general review we hiningi namin yon kung naka-specified sa OBC Division C table na if if the building qualifies for a commitment for general review like if the if it's more than three story more than 600 square meter building area for a group C or a group D pag nasa table kailangan ng review ng engineer umiiningi namin yon kasi naka-specified eh. uh, the other option tulad ng itong klase na may problema at bahay lang siya hindi nagko-qualify sa table pag as a building official if we feel that we cannot inspect it based on our technical expertise as a building official, um, then we inform the, the applicant, the homeowner, to provide a, an engineer report and a commitment for general review. Case, case as a case na yon. And we reason out that, um, na, alimbawa, uh, in, wala siya sa part nine table, uh, it can kick it to part four, alimbawa, timber frame, ang ganon. Uh, kahit maliit na building lang siya, eh, hindi magkukulipay sa OBC Division C, pero part 4, uh, timber frame siya, eh, hindi na mati-check. O, or hindi kami makakaakit para ma-check ang connection ng mga more than 10 on. So we ask for a commitment for general review uh, for that because we, we cannot verify. Something that we cannot verify, we ask for a commitment for general review. So ini-engage namin yung engineer na to to uh, check their drawing uh, at the same time provide us a conformance letter at the end of the project so at, at that in that case also nagbibigyan din ng chance eh, yung engineer na to rectify kung nagkaroon ng dip, ng ng pagkakaiba yung drawing na ginawa nila or yung report na ginawa ng professional engineer sa kayong actual na scenario so na na-justify nila yon na fix nila Sir, sir follow up question lang doon. Bali binanggit mo na rin eh. Paano kung yung kunyari yung permit permit plan eh binago? Kunyari nagbago. Bali probably because of uh, site condition o kaya parang kumbaga nagkamali yung hindi pantay yung poste so kailangan iurong o gawan ng bimo. Parang revision doon sa permit plan na approve. Ano ba ang proseso noon sir? Eh i sasabihin ba sa inyo for revision or parang as building na lang ang mangyayari um, kung may may mga changes kailangan kung, kung may permit siya uh, kailangan i-update mo kami kung anong revision na ginagawa ng professional engineer so kung nag-change ng beam kailangan bigyan kami ng bagong kopya ng ng revised drawing uh, para na ma-monitor namin and at the same time may mga cases na hindi 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 na ma check um, then we can ask for the engineer to provide us uh, a report uh, that it's uh, it's satisfactory or it's it's in general conformance with the with the building code uh, and with the intent of the drawing re -re apply pa ba yun sir o hindi na parang hindi ano na. Na. Hindi na parang uh, parang pano lang uh, submit pag nag-inspect bago mag-inspection, bag nag-request ng mga framing inspection siya. Bago mag-request uh, ng inspection yung contractor, sabihin sa amin, oh may changes yung drawing, yung yung design namin. Okay, sasabihin namin, okay, send me the email me the changes or the other option is give me a copy of the sealed drawings during the inspection. Wala nang dagdag yon, wala nang extra unless malaking changes talaga, kailangan review nila eh. Pero kung mga minor changes lang naman, we, uh, it's a co common, very common, na during construction, may mga changes. It's, it's, a, it's a kasama yun eh. Hindi talaga na eksakto na walang change. Lagi may change. And then we, and for me, I'm, I'm okay. Just you know, provide me updated copy. That they, you, you, the engineer revised this or revised that. 
uh, as long na kung engineers ang dis nag-design, dapat yung engineer din yun mismo ang mag-update ng drawing niya. Hindi, hindi sila pwedeng baguhin ng kontrakto lang ng walang consent ng engineer. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to the one of the one here. So, I'll show you. So, this is one of the commercial building. Uh, it's of 17 units, 14 residential and 3 commercial units. Echo Bay. So, that is yang, it was uh, a motel before and it's being used uh, residential now. And there's a uh, I did a home inspection last Saturday. Meron siyang three commercial units, coin was, hair shop, and a bakery. So, uh, and then uh, the 14 units, 50% of that, or more than 50% of the units, they were renovated for the past five years. So, ito, one of the units I'm showing here, it's a one bedroom. Meron siyang smoke alarm. Meron siyang heat detector. Meron siyang portable fire extinguisher. Uh, wood frame construction siya. And uh, another, another one of the unit also, this is a bachelor type. So meron din siyang portable fire extinguisher, uh, smoke alarm, and then uh, heat detector. Okay, so this one here. Um, uh, this is listed in MLS. Um, um, the price for this in MLS is uh, nine, nine, 998,500 MLS. So this one is one of the project I'm, I'm doing right now. I'm full selling this project um, for 950. So this is a cash flowing property. It's cash flow for 2,900. 20, 13% uh, return of investment. Uh, and the interest rate I use for this is 4.5%. 1% uh, rule, nasa 1.2 siya. Uh, debt coverage ratio, debt, debt coverage ratio, it should be 1.5 over higher, 1.81, maganda, that's good. Gross income multiplier should be uh, under nine, so 6.8, so it's even better. So maganda pasok na sa criteria. Due diligence date is August 10. Closing date is September 29. So this one, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the, uh, I'm wholesaling this property. So any, if anyone interested, um, you want to go commercial, um, and this is a cash flow in property. It, it's in, still in good condition. Um, um, May nagawa na namin inspection. So um, I, yesterday I attend one of the training from the one of the uh, real estate group. They because of the fluctuating interest rate right now, it's not quite stable. They they mentioned that if you use uh, a bank rate of seven percent, and if it's cash flowing, it's a good uh, good investment. So this one here. Um, the 13% here, I use 4.5% 4, 4, 4 interest rate. Now I applied the 7%, the assuming the, the bank interest 7%. This one is still 8%. So it's still a cash flowing property. So panalo pa rin, hindi siya negative. So this one is, I'm, I'm, I'm wool, wool selling this, this property uh, for now. So anyone interested, if you want to scale up uh, from residential to commercial, this is one of the opportunity. Um, so, pwede itong gawin yung, if, I suggest this type of building, you have to put this one under a corporation. And I can help you create a corporation as well if you want to uh, do a corporation. Maybe two of you or three create a corporation. I can help you also with that if you plan to. Where is this located, sir? Echo Bay. Oh, Echo Bay. It could be mala 20 minutes drive before you reach Sault Saint Mary. So very good. Uh, may dalawa na tayong kasama na naumi sa akin ng detail nito. Um, Filipino na scrapper din sila. So if, if anyone want to get the detail, I can provide um, later on. So nine nine eight cha ang listing sa MLS. 
I'm wholesaling it for 950 only. Labas na doon yung yung konting kwan sa amin. Uh, so we have 18 uh, participants here. So pwede nating paghati-hatian lahat. <laughs> Maganda to. Try to put it in a corporation. Pro protect your asset. I suggest uh, for 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 us guys to protect our asset by using a corporation. Um, ganitong kalaki na, karami na. Uh, better to put it in a corporation. All right, sir. I'm I'm good to go. But with any question you have for me, anything. Okay, let's open the floor for question. Kahit uh, may mga questions na tayo uh, a while ago. So baka may mga uh, future uh, renovations dyan na uh, you would like to ask. Um, feel free. Uh, we have Sir Winnie uh, free advice. <laughs> At free pa rin kahit uh, hindi in possession. So uh, yeah, any questions? Uh, sir Winnie. Yes, sir. Uh, just in case in the future na mayroong kaming question, uh, do you mind if you can uh, keep your contact? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. For sure. Um, nandito tayo. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to share what, what, what I can share to you guys. So um, you can contact me through either Messenger or Facebook. Um, or if you need my information, um, may... Uh, I, I'm employed at Township of Springwater. You can also reach me there, or if, or if you want, my my own personal cell number. I can give it to you later on. Okay, sir. Add ko na lang kayo sa Facebook. Uh, Nagbibuild kasi ako ng Melita project yun sa North. Eh. Okay. So, kakatapos lang namin ng uh, mag-pour ng ICF <laughs> kanina. Okay. So, good, good. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, sir. Sir Glenn, if you can, if you can uh, share uh, the project sa Capri para at least, uh, you know, ma, ma share natin yung mga experience mo uh, para ma inganyo yung iba to do their own project. Kung okay lang. Uh, uh, sure. Uh, walang problema. Um, actually, nakakuera ko ng empty land uh, last year. Uh, tapos sa uh, uh, Nag-lot clearing kami last year tapos nag-apply ako ng building permit pa um, re recently lang. So, it's a lakefront cottage. Uh, walang basement na sa 2,500 square foot uh, for uh, Airbnb purposes. Uh, pero since we walk out basement siya, abot siya ng mga almost 4,000 square foot. So, medyo challenging. Uh, time consuming kasi siyempre meron din akong full time na trabaho and then at the same time uh, nag ano kami about uh, 30 minutes north of Huntsville yung project so once in a while kailangan talaga mag back and forth para kausapin yung contractor and make sure everything is okay so hopefully so far so good okay naman um, well, medyo may delay lang kasi siyempre medyo hindi magandang panahon yun lagi nag-uulan so, so delay kami sa mga excavation, kahit sa pouring, lalo na sa concrete ngayon, ako problema yung, ano, yung kailangan mo talaga na mahabang lead time. Especially sa wood din, din sa mga framing, sa mga sa floor frame hanggang sa trusses. Ang trusses ko actually, in-order ko pa last year, number October, kanina lang yung na-deliver. So, it requires a lot of planning talaga. So, sa ngayon, lalo na ngayon, maraming nagpapa, nagpapagawa. Even yung framers ko, mag-start sila think, uh, next, next, next week. Uh, last year ko pa, last year pa rin ako nagpabuk sa kanila. Oh, I so, think, sir, magandang uh, ano, in possession natin next time yung uh, journey mo niyan. Uh, kasi meron tayong in possession last time yung build to rent. So, ito yung very good example uh, so hopefully let's uh, let's talk. <laughs> yeah, actually, ano na to, this is my second project. Uh, yung okay. first project ko, we start uh, built ako way back 2019 natapos siya ng 2020. 
Now, uh, ano na siya, uh, income generate, nag-i-set na siya income. It's the same thing, uh, Lakefront Cottage. Then. Oh, that's good, that's good. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, um, any more questions about the uh, uh, home inspection, permits? Um, or kung, kung gusto nyo reserve, yes, like uh, uh, Sir Winnie said, uh, anytime uh, we can uh, reach out. Um, you can add him on Facebook and uh, pwede nating, uh, since this is recorded, uh, we will um, post this uh, uh, YouTube natin para ma-review nyo ulit yung mga, kasi especially, uh, ang daming mga technical terms dito eh. So, um, siguro sir, uh, ano yung uh, last uh, uh, advice mo or anong mga takeaways natin dito uh, just to close the info session kung wala nang mga tanong. Um, sir Winnie. Yes, sir. Yung ano, uh, meron pa ang ano, pwede bang magana ng mga information dun sa septic tank leaching ng ano? Oh, yeah. Uh, anong, anong kailangan mo doon? Sa Nova Scotia, I think, uh, ano yung ano eh, um, uh, septic yung ano eh, septic yung ano nila, then I think meron siyang leaching dun sa ano, I want to know more about it. Uh, okay. Uh, ma um, ang 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 kasing ang septic system kasi ang sep, septic uh, septic system meron siyang lifespan kung existing na siya e, e, pag nakakuha ka ng property usually on the average 25 years lang yun eh so mm. darating ang time na tulad ng pinakita ko kanina ng example um, hindi na hindi na mag uh, magpipercolate yung effluent sa sa soil. So hmm. kailangan mo nang i-upgrade yung um ito, ito kailangan mo nang i-upgrade yung bed mo. Yung septic tank might be still okay, but yung bed mo kung saturated na siya, mag uh, kailangan mo nang siyang i-upgrade. Now, one way to to do this uh, if if ano ano yung klase ano exactly ang situation mo? Anong Mer meron siyang ano eh nakita kong uh, meron siyang uh, meron siyang uh, ano ba yun yung parang co concrete, circular concrete na takip uh, okay. di ko na katong na ano eh tapos meron pa daw siyang pump eh okay uh, it's pumping out somewhere uh, uh, sir one oh. sorry to interrupt <laughs> existing tong septic mo no tapos dalawa meron siyang pump ano Oh, so, meron siyang pump eh. Okay. Uh, so, main thing, ang main thing lang is more on maintenance? Oh, yun lang. Yun lang. Para okay. So, pinaka-importante uh, pinaka dyan, dapat meron kang oil, oil interceptor. Kasi, may, subutig na, kasi yun ang nagka, nagko-compromise ng, uh, ng mga ano mo, ng leaching system mo. Kasi mm. ang oil, aangat yun eh. Tapos papasok yun dun sa second chamber, eventually papasok dun sa ano hanggang maipapump niya, papasok yun dun sa mga distribution pipe mo. Mm. Tapos mag-turn into solid. Mag-liquify, uh, mag-solidify yung ano. Oo. Yung... Ngayon, yung wag yung... Pats. So kung ganun nangyari, tapos meron kang liquid na ano, hindi na niya ma-absorb ng leaching system mo. So mm. pero... Usually, ang mga ano dyan, kapag nangangamoy na dun sa leaching system mo, mm. na makikita mo yung problema niya kung may amoy na dun sa leaching system sa po, dun kung pumunta ko kung nasan yung leaching system mo, umaamoy, yun yung main thing. Tapos kailangan din, uh, just usually dapat pinapalinis mo siya every, uh, use ang sabi nila, every 2-3 years. Pero yung sa akin sa cottage, every year ko yun pinapapump out. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Pero yun nga yung naging problema ko, hindi ako naglagay ng ng ano, ng oil interceptor nung install namin. Pero buti naman, sabi nung nagpump sa akin, kasi siyempre yung mga tao, pag nag-pour sila ng oil, hindi mo naman sila pwedeng maano. So, nag nagkaroon ng konting uh, tawag dito, nagkaroon ng konting ano dun sa first level, so, sa first first chamber. So, ni-recommend niya talaga na maglagay ng oil interceptor. 
So, so yun na ang ano. Tapos na uh-huh. every 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 week meron ka ding ilalagay na na parang solution na nabibili sa Canadian Tire or sa ano na basahin mo lang yung mga maraming product noon. I- merong pina-flash, merong liquid ina-add mo. Uh, merong monthly, merong weekly na ilalagay ipa-flash mo sa mga toilet para yung mga bacteria at uh, para gumanda yung condition ng doon ng, ng ano mo, ng septic mo. Plus, uh, I will send the, the pictures sir. Uh, Kayang dalawa ni Sir Winnie. Para um, at least ma-picture siya. Nabuksan uh, na ba sir yung septic mo? I don't know. <laughs> Hindi, ano kasi malalaman mo lang yung situation doon kung mabuksan mo yung tatlong chamber. <laughs> Hindi, di ko pa alam eh. Kaya, pero yun green. Yun lang namin eh. Pag, yun lang namin eh. Sabi, ma, mer- pero green ang takip. Uh-huh. Green na circular. Hindi, hindi. hindi. Ah, Kasi ah, kung, sure. kung green na circular, uh, bago pa yun. Luma na yun. Luma na yun kung, kung, kung ano pa, kung, kung concrete pa yung takip, yun mga luman design. Kung, uh, concrete pa siguro. Uh, concrete pa, I think. Hello, sir. Concrete oh. pa, concrete pa siya. So, padala ko yung picture, sir. Pagka ano. Oh, pag, sige, sir. Pagka sige, ano, sir, para sa, pag natin. Pag-disturb. <laughs> na, na ano ko lang, na-share ko lang experience ko. Yeah, nga eh. Okay, okay eh. lang, okay lang yun, sir. Um, yeah, so we're okay, sir, ganun lang. 9 o'clock, so okay baka ano na yung mga ibang uh, ano natin dito. So, yeah, so just last last word, sir. Uh, sir Winnie. Yeah, I dagdagan ko lang yung 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 about the septic system. Um, j- just to make sure um, we that we are on the same page here. Ang mga <clears throat> pag may septic system ka, uh, may mga dapat kang iwasan na itapon sa septic system mo, sa inidoro mo. Mga iwasan mo doon, inexplain ko to. Sherwini, you're on mute. Sorry. Oh, my apology. Okay, so just ulitin ko lang. Yung, yung about septic system, may mga dapat tayong iwasan itapon sa septic pag, pag sa, 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 mga, sa mga inidoro natin. Kung, naka, kung may septic system ka, one is uh, yung pintura, bawal na bawal yun. Kung nagpipintura ka, huwag ka magtapon ng pintura. Kasi pa nagtapong ka doon, papalik sa septic tank mo, paglabas niya, punta sa pipe, magkakaroon na ng clogging yun. Pintura yun eh. Uh, and then, another one is yung mga mga chlorox, sonrox. Um, pinapatay noon ang bacteria. Kailangan buhay ang bacteria. Kasi ang bacteria will dissolve the the solid and then uh, create... Uh, Uh, na, 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 na didecompose siya easily pag may bacteria. Dapat huwag mong papatay ng bacteria. Kaya iwasan mo yung mga mga heavy na mga sabon, mga so, sonrox na yung chlorox na iwasan, i- i-minimize natin na itapon. So, yun lang ang mga advice ko dyan para magtagal umaba ang buhay ng septic system. So, okay, an- another one here that I'd like to uh, share. I-, I don't know if may, may question si Ma'am Jeneline. Yeah, Madam Jenny. Um, uh, you're on mute. Ayun, okay. Yon, uh, I guess uh, my message ko lang is uh, I'd like to thank uh, Kawini for sharing that valuable information. And I announce ko na rin our second meetup would be uh, in Barry. So, ang ating coordinator is Kawini and Tom De La Cruz. Hopefully, a uh, third week or fourth week ng July. So, this is servants and invitation. Sana maka-attend kayo. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Si, si Katam, okay na siya sa date? Yeah, okay na siya. Uh, he will coordinate with you. Yeah, he get in touch with me regarding dun sa exact date. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Um, okay. J- just to add also um, for, for some closing words. Okay. Um, so, yung mga, uh, if you're doing some kind of construction renovation uh, with regards with your real estate investment, um, you have to work with the building department for that. They, they, they are there to protect your investment. 
they are there to do the check and balance for the workmanship of your contractor. They are there to give you advice. Uh, so, so treat them as part of your power team. Uh, um, may, kung may mga scenario ka sa site, ang tanong kayo, um, like kay, kay Sir uh, uh, Juan, kung may tanong sa septic system, maybe the best way, one on one, one option there is uh, uh, kung ano yung may advice sa lahat uh, um, they, they might have somebody uh, in the area na septic designer who can evaluate uh, the existing condition of the septic system and, and, and provide the, the proper advice. Uh, that's one way also. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, I mean, the building official, it, it's there for you guys to protect the homeowner, the, the, uh, to protect your investment. Don't, don't be, it's just a phone call away. You can ask them a question free, um, call the building department. Um, so, um, yeah, work, work with them uh, as you move up and scale up regarding real estate investment. That's, I think that's one of my uh, best advice, um, good advice. And again, some of the other technical matters, um, and then I'm necessarily for professional engineering advice also. Um, uh, maybe he can help you out uh, for for future plans uh, so that uh, ma, ma, you know uh, you are uh, getting the the proper service in a most economical way um yun lang masabi ko seller bin maybe you can add something about that uh, thank you sir uh and then and then and that and then naman tayo lahat na Pwede nilang pagtanungan. Si Glenn po din sa electrical. Uh, ano yan? Biasa yan. Si Sir Juan. Yan, um, uh, ibig sabihin, marami sa grupo na actually mga engineer din in background. So, more or less, mabibigyan nila kayo ng advice. Na, ano, tulad ng sinabi ni Sir Wayne. Thank you. Thank you pala sa, ano, sa seminar. Very informative. Salamat din po. Um, Sir Dennis. Yes, uh, yeah, sir. So as always, uh, salamat sa time um, na always uh, binibigay mo sa group. And uh, yeah, so hopefully, uh, you know, if there is any uh, updates sa building code, uh, uh, let's see kung pwede natin mag, magka-session ulit. Uh, but uh, in behalf sa Capri, uh, again, salamat as a time and then hopefully uh, uh malinawagan uh, yung yung mga grupo natin na uh, you know um wag matakot sa building official kasi yung mindset natin is like building official magre-reject yan eh so it's very good na you you uh, mention na uh, the the building official should be part of your power team kasi they're they're the ones that will support you eh. So um, hopefully, um, ma, ma change your mindset ng mga ng mga uh, uh, you know mga real estate investors na there you you guys are are uh, the ones who 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 will support um, the this uh, type of uh, investment, diba? So yeah, so hopefully uh, next uh, next session um, I'm I'm working with the with the team. Uh, baka pwede tayong mag uh, discuss about uh, the current rates ko anong nangyayari ngayon so we're hoping to get uh, some some uh, speaker uh, next but uh, anyone uh, sa grupo natin kung may gusto kayong i-share uh, feel free to message uh, uh, me or uh, sa so mga admin uh, para ma-share natin yung kung ano yung mga experiences niyo so that's all. And uh, again, salamat uh, uh, sa pag-attend and uh, have a good night, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Dennis. Thank Bye. You, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.